The mob attacks on Capitol Hill were assaults on the very essence of our republic. Where do we go from here? Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The shocking, sickening events of January 6th on Capitol Hill underscore several significant points. First, violence from whatever the quarter, whatever the provocation is wrong, period. The First Amendment of our Constitution guarantees our right to assemble peaceably, to express our grievances, and promote our points of view. What happened this week was the utter antithesis of this. Our founders would have been profoundly disturbed and disgusted. Second, the Constitution provides the peaceful means for attaining and transferring political power. These must be respected now and forever. Third, in a country as diverse as ours, there will be differences, some of them big and heartfelt on a number of issues. But the Constitution was specifically designed to provide mechanisms for differences to be debated and dealt with peacefully. Our founders deeply feared unchecked passions and violence. They wanted a system where laws were regarded as legitimately made, even if you might not like a particular outcome. The purpose of debate and elections is to allow ideas and issues to be discussed and to permit a consensus or at least a majority opinion to emerge. We must respect the need to have changes made openly. That's why preserving the right of free speech and the means to express views must be fiercely protected. Concerning the recent elections, states around the country should follow the example of Florida after the fiercely fought 2000 presidential campaign. The popular vote in Florida that year was a virtual tie and the result was massive litigation and two Supreme Court decisions before the outcome was decided. The state's election system was an unholy mess. But after that bitter experience, Florida enacted major reforms. In the 2020 elections, things went smoothly there despite unprecedented early voting. A major part of this effort should be able to once again have as much voting take place as possible on the election day itself. Because of the pandemic, there was a massive use of mail-in ballots. Many states were unprepared, and a number of them made decisions that worsened the process and the policing of these ballots. What was stunning about the Trump campaign was his decision not to closely monitor rule changes in states before the election and have teams of lawyers on hand during the campaign and on election day itself to deal with any possible adverse decisions or outright irregularities. By contrast, the two George W. Bush presidential campaigns did not make that mistake. We can take heart that despite the horrible events of this week, the Constitution prevailed over the mob. Congress went ahead with the official confirmation of the election of Joe Biden as our next president. I'm Steve Forbes. Thank you for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.